Well, hello there. What's up, dudes? Welcome back to Atlas Horizon. I'm Steven Thomas, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do the first moon skip in Super Mario Odyssey. Now, I did see someone else's video where they showed how to do this. Didn't seem like it was really as in-depth for you guys, so I want to try and clarify some things and also show you guys some other things after you get the first moon skip. But I'm going to go ahead and have a link in the description to the guy that I saw do this. So if you want to check out his original video, feel free. Big shout outs to him. I tried a bunch of different ways to try and get up here. And as you can see here, there's some weird invisible wall. If we try it from a different angle like this, same thing. Looks like you can get through, not capable of doing it. And I even tried an obscure side. So this side I'm going to show you guys later on. But for now, because you can actually get up there. For now, here's the actual tactic. Went by really quick. I understand. Now I'm going to show you guys again, but we're going to do this in slow motion and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. So when you're inside the water and you throw the hat, Cappy, as soon as you receive it, as long as you're at the top of the water, you jump into the air, you can actually get an elevated jump. At the peak of your jump is when you want to throw your hat towards this corner of the wall. It's important that you don't throw the cap too far, otherwise you will dive and hit the wall itself. So doing a bounce off of the hat, off the wall, is now going to allow you to get a little bit higher elevation. Where I'm now throwing the hat and doing the lunge jump are slightly at a different angle. That way then I cut in towards the mountainside and you want to land on that spot and do a roll in. So I'm going to show you guys again with full speed. Feel free to rewind this video, go through the slow motion parts or the fast um, motion parts as well. And that's it guys. So you can see that there's this invisible wall. If we make it to the other side and I throw Cappy, it's definitely hitting something and it's even behaving in a weird way. It's not coming straight back at us. It's almost gliding across to some other point and then pulling back to us. And now here's the question, what kind of stuff can we do once we get to the other side? We can collect coins, we go over to the Odyssey, gives you the prompt for some commands, just like you would normally do. The globe doesn't move at all when you try and jump on it, you can't go through the front door. If you try to go through, let's say, the very top section, do a little backflip right up here. Try to do ground pound into it like you could normally and it still doesn't work, so this just seems to be a prop. Uh, other sections are not going to be accessible until you actually beat it. So like down below, you just saw that. Normally there's a chain chomp here. We try to go get one of the moons that's located up top here. They're not there. But what is cool is that there's the checkpoints. So the checkpoints will still work regardless. You can still go get a lot of the purple coins. You can't get all the purple coins using this method. For whatever reason, they do spawn in more once you've actually achieved the first moon. But there are placements for most of them. Now this is really interesting. Using the chain chomps here, we can actually open up and find a different moon that you can normally get. But this is technically now our first moon. But it's not labeled first moon, it's labeled chomp through the rocks. So it's kind of, kind of a lie. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go do the brutal fight scene and I'm going to do the speed racing, sorry, speed running T-Rex jump cut. And with this, normally it would trigger the cutscene right here. But as you can see, there's no cutscene activated. And if we get closer, there's a couple other really peculiar things that's going to happen. So for one, we have the chain chomp. If we go through the chain chomp, we go through it, which clearly identifies it's a transparent object. It's not actually a physical thing. But what about Brutal herself? Okay, she can damage us. You may think, well, what if I try to secure the moons? They're just hanging off of her neck. Maybe I can cheat my way through that too, right? And the answer is no. You will die if you try to do this. And what happens when you die? Do you spawn to the very beginning or at a checkpoint? Good news is you spawn back at a checkpoint. So it's a little bit finicky trying to get to that little notch spot, actually securing your way through. And you may think, all right, if we don't do the T-Rex method, what if we go the traditional route? Well, for one thing, if you go the traditional route after you've unlocked this section here, you can still get coins, earn these towards yourself, you can jump up into this section here that's a hidden zone, and lo and behold, there's a second moon! So now we've secured two moons before we even got to the first one. From here, we go and secure ourselves a chain chomp, open up our pathway, and traditional route speaking, 
we would be activating cutscene right about here. But yet again, it still doesn't work. So, at this point, can I now interact with the Chain Chomp? And no, it's still transparent, and you still get hurt by the Brutal. Over here, where we have the cube, which you would normally be able to interact with once you've beaten the game, played around trying to see if we could activate it, it didn't work. Captain Toad, not anywhere to be found down below. And here's the biggest question. We're not supposed to have the T-Rex. If we bring it over to the beginning, can we open it up and get the first moon? Not only can we open it up, but while we're still in the T-Rex, we can secure it. And this is probably the coolest looking way I've seen of getting the first power moon. We have the cloud disappear like as if it's from Naruto and he just did a jutsu. T-Rex jutsu. Down goes the bridge, and as this cutscene activates, you can see the cloud dissipate. And it now reveals the brutal on the top that you can go and fight. And, um, I tried skipping this other cutscene that Cappy actually tries to tell you about with the ship, and I was able to jump off on the side. This is the closest thing I could think of to really getting obscure with where the trigger zones would be, and it didn't seem to want to work. So I go back, I do the speedrunning tactic with the T-Rex, jump up on top, and lo and behold, triggers the fight scene, everything is back on track. But we got our first moon, third, technically and we were able to collect a lot of the purple coins and things. That does it for this video, guys. If you enjoy yourselves, feel free to drop a like, drop a comment down below if you want to see me try something else. If you guys enjoyed yourselves, feel free to subscribe. I do Super Mario Odyssey speedruns on this channel, and I'm looking to try and get into a lot of other things into the game. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys later.